Amar, I have had a lot of time to think about where Daniel Ricciardo fits into the pantheon of drivers, what level he is based on his career and achievements. And I've struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled. And the only person that I can think of that I think he he bears comparing to is Sebastian Vettel. Oh, no. So we're going to talk about who the heck is better, Daniel Ricciardo or Sebastian Vettel? Come Amazing. on, Chef. You must be joking. No, no. You're completely sane. Okay, so I know that this sounds absolutely blasphemous. How can no, I, this... how how can I even uh, compare a four timer to Daniel Ricciardo, who ignominiously had to leave V Carb of all places? Four, four. Yeah, that's right. So, so the way I'm, I'm going to have to couch this is we're going to have to park those four championships at the door. <laughs> Okay. Have to, have to, because look, unless we're saying that winning a championship, right, no matter what, is the only thing um, separating these two, uh, I, I'm going to say that there are there are mitigating factors that allowed Vettel to get a championship that Daniel Ricciardo did not have access to. My argument here is that winning a world championship is not the be all and end all you cannot use that as your sole argument for saying that one driver is better than another otherwise we're going to somehow convolute this into sebastian vettel with four world championships is better than ayrton senna with three that's like that is a patently ridiculous argument unless unless you're sitting here thinking that sebastian vettel is better than ayrton senna I'm uh, I'm having a, I mean, look, if we're parking championships away, then why not? You know, let's throw them all in there, no? <laughs> okay, well, I mean, if that's where we're going, then this argument has turned into a completely different one. No, we're not but, going there, but but I'm just, <laughs> I mean, the idea that we'd have to park four championships away, it's just, yeah, but, but, one but, championship, I understand. You could say, okay, that, that could be mm -hmm. flukish, right? But four? <laughs> but I will, I will give you a, I'll give you my reasons. Okay. I'll give you my reasons why, right? So, so when, when, when you look at these two drivers, I think over the course of their careers, there are, there are remarkable similarities between the two of them, right? They both started off at backmarker teams, right? Um, Sebastian Vettel was in was at Toro Rosso, as was Daniel Ricciardo. In fact, he he'd even started at Marussia before he got to, to to Toro Rosso. They both impressed in their in their seasons uh, at the at that team. Sebastian Vettel even won a race at that team, but. I know that's going to be used as an argument against me, and I, I want to talk about that in a minute as well. But they then headed off to to Red Bull, but that's that's where the the situations were slightly different. Although both of them performed, I think at similar levels. I think Sebastian Vettel had championship winning material under him through those four years, right? He had an Adrian Newey car with a Renault engine, with a map and a, and a platform that was just head and shoulders above everybody else. And yet he still struggled in two of those four seasons when actually he, you know, the car should have allowed him to walk away with championships. Daniel Ricciardo, on the other hand, performed very, very well in Red Bulls that were not dominant cars in the time in the seasons that he had them am i right or wrong there was uh, there a season between 2014 and 2018 when he left that red bull had a car capable of winning a world championship no no and in the one season where they were together at 2014 this is when sebastian vettel had come off the back of winning nine races on the trot so i've heard arguments elsewhere that uh sebastian vettel uh it was a mental thing he wasn't in his prime anymore I, I cannot see how someone can be any more in their prime than coming off the back of nine consecutive wins he was beaten in 2014 he finished that championship where sixth i think fifth or sixth i'll have to check my notes he finished 
fifth, correct. And Daniel Ricciardo finished third, having won three races that season. Sebastian Vettel won none off the back of having won nine races on the trot. So if you look at their their one season together, Daniel Ricciardo clearly performed better. So if you, if if we take the Red Bull seasons out of it just for a second, well, actually, no, no, let's not take them out of it for a second. Let's have a look at their teammates, yeah? So Vettel did beat his teammate every season for those four seasons. It was Mark Webber for the entirety of their their stints together in, in Red Bull until he had Daniel Ricciardo in the other car. And he beat him every every season, although in 2010 it was pretty close uh, and you could argue that, that that Weber threw away that that chance but I'll give you that Ricardo was beaten by Danny Kvyat in 2015 but there were a lot of reliability issues on Daniel Ricardo's side and maybe I'm making excuses maybe that's helping my argument I don't know but that's how it was and then over the course of the subsequent seasons he had Max Verstappen in the car alongside him Two out of those three seasons, he beat Max Verstappen, who currently is the best driver on the grid at the moment. Oh my god! Um, all right, so I, I, I heard you. So th- I, th- I that's just like... my Red Bull argument, which I'm I'm going to let, you, let I, you rebut me on before I move on to the Ferrari and this, Renault arguments. This was, this is a case of you presenting facts but like if you present this in a court of law like this would be dismissed on 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 grounds that this is all circumstantial right because you used you use words like well i might be making an excuse here or like well there are mitigating factors here of course every championship every driver's success or failure has mitigating champions even lewis the great lewis hamilton even the great michael schumacher dominant engines change everything of course that's a given like we can't you can't separate that out just for making this argument about Daniel Ricciardo. Like I can't. And, I, and you, you asked me to park the, the four championships away. I would just like to, to remind you that these are four in a row. And yes, every championship has a story. But to be able to do it over the course of four seasons, yeah, it's, it's not, not like, either. yeah, but it's not like you could just stick someone else and then that would happen. Maybe it would. Uh-huh. But there wasn't yeah, anyone. Yeah, that's the, that's the question. There no, wasn't anyone. Okay, but, so but you, you, you don't think you, that, you don't think if you stuck Fernando Alonso or Lewis Hamilton in that sure. car, they would have won those championships. If you stuck Kimi Raikkonen in it, it would work. It would Probably, be, exactly. If you stuck Lewis Hamilton in it, it would work. Sure, exactly. But just you could pick ten drivers off the grid and say that that's not saying anything, right? Look, I agree with you. A lot of success that a Formula One driver has or failures has to do with some a lot of things that are just outside their control. I think we can agree on that, and that can be said. For every driver, even all of the four or five grades, whoever you want to throw in there, luck is a part of it. And not luck in the purest sense, but luck in the sense that you have to be in the right place at the right time. And what is the one thing Fernando has not had is not being in the right place at the right time a lot of times, although that might change in the future. Who knows if he if he decides not but to. But if we're talking about pure ability but, here, but you that's, can't that's, judge all I, that. that's all I'm trying to talk about. But you can't ju- but 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 you can't so that's, so that's why I'm trying so that, that's why there's a correction that I'm making here, right? Okay, that, so let's talk about ability then, right? Because hmm. yes, you're you're the guy with the stats. So today I came prepared with some stats. Would you know it? And these are stats during the three uh during the years that both Daniel Ricardo and Sebastian Vettel competed okay sebastian Weddle, 2744 points daniel ricardo 1300 points these are these are just and and during this time seb had three titles so i'm not including the one where ricardo was not on the grid right wins sebastian Weddle had 43 wins daniel ricardo had only three wins in in those same in that same yeah. so just looking at apples for apples like based on your but this, i don't think it is apples I mean, for apples though but but i mean look but you only you're never gonna get okay like like it's you're only apples say, to apples to the six to the okay in the in the same in the same era right Fernando Alonso won nowhere near the same number of races sure. so he's only won 32 races in his career right F- Fernando Alonso has only won 32 races in his career and Sebastian Vettel has won 51 okay do you think that over the course of their career that Fernando Alonso is an inferior driver to Sebastian Vettel no, but do you think then Daniel Ricciardo is a better driver than Fernando if we again park all of those things? 
No, because the championship, right? Those two no, championships. No, no, no right? Because, so because if you look at the nuance of it, Fernando has has operated at a at a, at a high high level in every right. and Daniel's every not. machine he's been in. And and the argument isn't whether Sebastian has or not. You you have to now prove to me that Daniel has done better than him despite their circumstances. Yeah, you made that case for Fernando very easily, right? Because we all agree to that. But I don't think you can make that case. I mean, no, look, I, and I, I don't want to a, be prisoner of the moment, but just look at the way it's ended. Like Daniel has literally had a chance thrown to him on purely emotional grounds. And we've done a whole podcast on this, our last episode or two episodes ago, where we've argued that drivers like Yuki and others, Liam Lawson, others should have gotten a chance. We wouldn't be saying that. We didn't say that with Sebastian Vettel, even though he had a bad end at Ferrari. He did. And then he eventually Not just a bad his... end at Ferrari. He didn't have a great end at Aston Martin either. Either. And I think that's that, fine. But that's also Aston Martin, no? I mean, like the Aston Martin. Well, no, because, he... because Fernando turned up at Aston Martin. And as soon as he had an opportunity, look what he did. He's absolutely... But Chaz, that's also catching but... the right, right, being in the right sure. window. But he's right? put Lance Stroll absolutely in the mud. If you look at the... Yeah, but if you look at if you look at the pace difference between the two, there's a significant difference between how far ahead Fernando is from Lance versus how far ahead Sebastian Vettel was. Well, but then ahead you're making my but case. I do want to, but I do want to look at look at Daniel versus Sebastian Vettel in their post Red Bull era, sure. right? So the argument is always made that post um, Red Bull, post Red Bull. Uh, that was where Daniel Ricciardo's career took a took a nosedive. I would argue that actually, in the in the Renault, for the for the two seasons that he was at Renault, actually he was very very competitive. There was a car that was basically not able to do anything, and yet against Nico Hulkenberg over two seasons, well Nico Hulkenberg for one season, and then Esteban Ocon for a second season, both of whom are very highly rated. Let's not forget that Nico Hulkenberg does fit my my definition of winning an F2 title in his rookie season. So he's not a slouch. Took care of Nico Hulkenberg. Put that car on the podium twice, right? Okay, you're going to point to the fact that Sebastian Vettel won races and, and fought for championships in that Ferrari. Agreed. But again, the level of their cars... The okay. level of their cars are not the same. But that Ferrari... Can't... That Ferrari was was you know in in 2019, Sebastian won. Sebastian Vettel won one race against Charles Leclerc's two, and the one race that he did win, Leclerc probably should have won. But again, again, we're not talking about Sebastian Vettel as being. We're not even talking about him being a top five Formula One driver ever. So I, I mean, again, no, we're I, not. I okay. bring, we we just put put that back in in scope, right? We're talking about was Daniel Ricciardo better than Sebastian? Okay, I think the... better, okay. I'm going to walk that back a little bit. Okay, all be, right. Be, be, better is maybe an overstatement, but I think really? they are, I think they are comparable. I don't think the Vettel is suddenly. Yes, a, you... a, I don't think the Vettel is a nailed on better than Daniel Ricciardo. Sure. If you look at the if you look sure. at the entirety sure. of their careers, yeah, of course. I, I mean, think there's look, an I, argument here to be said that. Actually, to be honest, I mean. I, I would make the same case for Fernando, right? In his post sort of winning phase. Yes, he's been there and he's he's done brilliant driving. But I, I think a lot of it is, again, once you, you can only be in those two or three teams in that window and then either that's it or not. Like it's pretty much over since then. And, and that, that would be true if today Max left and he went to Aston Martin too. Like, I mean, I know we're, we're hyping it all up, but it's not going to be that easy. Or, you know, the fact that Lewis is moving to Ferrari, like the, Lewis stands a chance to have his, has yeah, like, but, be diluted yeah, too. But, like, but let's Amar, not forget that. Right? Amar, when you go to another team, you have your teammate as a benchmark. Sure. Right? Sure. So, so Seb went to Ferrari and he Kimi. demolished Kimi Raikkonen. There you go. I mean, I don't think you can, you can discount the fact that Sebastian destroyed Kimi Raikkonen. Like that's, that, that to me is not a throwaway thing. And I get that, you know, look, I mean, towards the end, uh, he did struggle and I'm not sitting up here saying Sebastian has had like the best end to his career. Uh, but, but where did that end start then? Because look, K Kimi was, was a pretty spent force by the time he went back to Ferrari. In fact, you know, he, he, I think ever since the 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 switch to Bridgestones, actually he 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 suffered. Okay, he won the title in two thousand and seven, but from then on, 
he, yeah, I mean, he, I know he suffered quite badly, didn't he? Like, okay, he had a couple of wins at Lotus, but I, I also think Ferrari. He wasn't the force he, to be reckoned with that he was before. He wasn't the force. I mean, he he was there. He was brought back mainly to be, you know, kind of like what Red Bull hopes Checo would be to Max. Yeah, right? that was but the in the same idea. way that Bottas was brought into right. Mercedes. To, to Mercedes, kind of the same. So, so thing. you're so 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 that yeah. Kimi Raikkonen wasn't the world championship winning or two thousand and five fastest wasn't. guy in it, uh, of all time. Kimi Raikkonen. This is this is a different kind of Kimi, because as soon as 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 um, Vettel had a younger driver in the car, Charles Leclerc, it was it was kind of all over. That was the beginning of the end for him. You know, I'm, I hate to kind of take it off track, Shaz, but I genuinely think look at the way he's ended his career and and said everything since then, and we know what Seb is now all about right which is environmental sustainability things like that i think that and, and i think he had alluded to the fact that he had been thinking about this and i think there's an element of this this is not me calling um anyone uh complacent or anything like that but when you're a four-time champion and then you you start seeing things uh get, get more challenging i think there's sort of a natural drop-off point that happens there's I, very few I, drivers I, that have been able to maintain it yeah i agree but i think daniel ricardo has had the same thing he had sure. that bruising time at mclaren yes. where even then he won a race wow. but he, you know he had that bruising time at mclaren over the over the two years and i i think the mojo just went like in well, the but same no, but, way okay, that, but... The same I, but, way that Vettel's mojo at Aston was no, but he okay, was. okay, but but I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. He actively ran away from Max Verstappen, though. Like you cannot, you that you cannot twist that any other way. Like he and he says this himself in Drive to Survive. Like he did not want to play second fiddle. He just absolutely did not. And so I guess you could make the argument that I, if Danny were as great as yeah. you think he is, he could have stuck it out there and oh, found a way to yeah, fly. I, I, I'm not saying that Daniel Ricciardo is better but, than Max But I'm just saying that I'm this... I'm not saying he's, he's in the pantheon of greats, like he needs to be on the Mount Rushmore. But my point is... When drivers, you, when, what I'm saying is that in a team where... Um, in, if, if you're looking at their careers together and you look at the obstacles that were put in front of them, I think that actually Daniel Ricciardo compares very well to... Sebastian I actually Vettel. think... That, no, but I, I'm not making the case that he should be compared to Max or anyone else. What I'm saying is this, to me, goes against him. This is a minus in his column by itself because he ran away from what was a formidable car and coming into the right window. And look... I mean, Max has shown success unlike... I mean, look, no one was... No one's probably going to no one could have done what Max is doing, okay, right? But his best chance to to be in the mix was right there. I know, I know, he did a pretty good job at Renault Chess, but they were not going to win anything, and they, but, and even well, with McLaren too. Like that was that was, and also these. I mean, we have to talk about how he's been making decisions too, right? Like, and and by the way, he's done very well for himself. So I'm not here going to throw a pity party for for Daniel Ricciardo by any means, right? But. He a, a lot of his downfall has to do with him making bad choices and bad walking choice? away from challenge. I mean, I think I don't think you can undersell the idea that he walked away from Red Bull because he felt like he was not going to be treated yeah, okay, as a driver. Yeah, sure, but you can look at it another way, which is that Red Bull were clearly leaning towards Max Verstappen. That was happening anyway. Sure. They were starting to push everything towards Max. So. Daniel Ricciardo can either sit there and go, okay, I'm going to carry on in this team where eventually I'm just going to turn into the guy that gets the odd win here or there. Yes. Play second fiddle to Max. You know what? Or I go somewhere else and I try and, and I try and build something of my own. And you can look at it that way too. Yeah. But I mean, you, I would 100% agree with you, except for listen to his words uh, in the last couple of years. He's wanted to come back and have a fairy tale ending at Red Bull. Do you think he was going to have that yeah, but driving next but, to Max? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This but, is my but, point. But it, is, it says something about not, his way of thinking too, right? But he's not he's not prime Daniel Ricciardo anymore, though, is he? No, I In understand that. that Sebastian Vettel but, but that is regret all over it, at the end of at the end of his career. Like he didn't Vettel didn't go to Aston Martin thinking he was going to win the world championship, did he? No, and no, he, he ran did. away. And from I'm not the, saying he, but he already won four. Chess. He didn't have to. This, not, a, this not a Ferrari he did it. I understand that, but he went to Ferrari with the idea of winning a championship, just winning like a championship, Sandler did. Which he did just too, like Lewis in the same way that, yeah, so, but in the yeah. same way that Daniel Ricciardo went to Renault. Oh, come on. It's not the same thing, though. It's not the same thing going to Renault. I think it it's is. It's not I think the same he, thing. But, but that is why he went there. And you, and it is the same thinking. It's exactly the same thinking. He Like Vettel ran away from Red Bull because Daniel Ricciardo was, was usurping him. After the next big, The next big thing was... 
sure, but the next big thing was in front of him and he left. And and in that period, Daniel Ricciardo arguably became one of the top two or three drivers in Formula One. Chez, you, you do you think uh, Lewis Hamilton is running away from George Russell? No. No. But so that's, I mean, again, but he's he's no, but, but no, there's a, I don't think but, I don't think you can, what you're doing is what aboutism and that that's not what It's I'm not doing about here. what it's I'm not looking a, at this I'm looking I'm, at this the reason I'm example. thinking the reason I'm picking Lewis Hamilton is because he's already won a lot. So he, but that's he, not why he's, he's not moving. having um, Chess. Yes, you you bring up that one season with Daniel Ricciardo, but there's four damn seasons before that where he's won, and he was not just competing against Mark Webber; he was competing against others too. Like those championships no, went down to the wire. He, he they were won. oh come on! They, you just said they didn't have a dominant run in that in that. I mean, he they won nine races uh, in a row. Not all four seasons. Not all four seasons. Okay. And but okay, but if so you're that, gonna that, one year. So that you tells me just, more but... about Sebastian Vettel's level that actually in a dominant car, when he should have been winning by miles, they went down to the okay, wire. Great, but he won the championship, man. Uh, look, I, exactly. So that's, yeah. that's, that's, he that's did my argument. It, that's he did my it argument. Win. That's fine. No, but he did yeah. it, but he won. That's it's... Yeah, again, but Amar, that, what I'm saying is in that situation, you put anybody in that car. Which has, you won. can make that argument for any driver that hasn't won it, right? I mean, if if our barometer on this is going to be, let's compare Danny Kvyat to, to Sebastian Vettel, because if, if the circumstances were better, he could have won. Let's do that with Lance Stroll. Let's do that. With, no, we can't do that. Like, you you, you, you can't. But I, you can't. Can I mean, I love Carlos Sainz, but no one thinks... Hmm? But you can look at what Daniel Ricciardo did with the situation that he had. He, he was bad. I mean, look at how he ended at McLaren. He yeah. was bad. He was. I mean, you talk about Sebastian Vettel getting beaten by Charles Leclerc. I'm talking about their Leclerc. situation at Red Bull, and and actually their situation at Red Bull. He did not disgrace himself by any means. In fact, by at the time that he left Red Bull, he was the most highly sought after. Okay, driver wait. Are you telling me grid. that? Okay, so so are you telling me that the better exit was Daniel Ricciardo's and not Sebastian Vettel's? No, I I'm saying they're comparable. They're not the same. Sebastian had a podium in that Aston Martin too. And actually he had two, right? But one, he got disqualified. Ricardo for... won in his McLaren. Yes. After... Uh, well, really why we that. Like, I mean, that's, why that's we can't win. It's, yeah. it's not the win on Sebastian Vettel got a po- Sebastian Vettel got a podium in that Aston Martin. You know because, this very because, well. Because, because Valtteri Bottas did a, did a, went and skittled the entire grid, number one. And the one in okay. Baku was because... Because was because Lewis Hamilton had to pit for a for his uh, uh, headrest, and because Valtteri Bottas had a puncture, so that was also an inherited podium. No, it isn't an inherited podium. It's right. not the same because here's why: many things happen in a race, but when two drivers get together the way Max and Lewis did, I don't think I don't think we can classify that as other mistakes or errors. Like those two were added and, and that's why it's that's why it's a different example. Why are we do, no, no, but, but even not, so how is that even a different Daniel example? Ricardo, I've just told you, Daniel Ricardo I've just told you why Sebastian Vettel okay, you know what? Got you're right. Podiums. I'll give you that. Yeah, you're right. Daniel Ricardo didn't even get to finish the season. Okay. That's all enough said. Enough said. He's got like yeah, six yeah. races. That, that is because and, he's got the cachet of being a four time world champion. That's why Sebastian Vettel is allowed to finish a season. Anyone should. It's like anyone. asking Michael Schumacher to not finish his 2012 season. Chance, any four time, but because uh, again, we cannot just walk by the fact that there are four championships and four back to back ones. So yes, there can be many mm. breaks that Sebastian got. Maybe he isn't the greatest. Fair enough. But winning four years in a row, doing anything four times in a row is hard. Doing it over four seasons, that cannot just be a throwaway thing. We cannot just do that. It's absolutely... Yeah, and, and, I, and I think Adrian Newey did a very good job on that. Absolutely, fair enough. No, no problem with that. Uh, and Adrian Newey cannot to, drive To, to the Fernando car. Alonso's point in 2012, I am, I am, I am driving against Adrian Newey. That's what okay, he said. That's, I mean, that was him playing mind games, games, right? He was just but, playing yeah, mind games. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, good. But, but, I mean, look, we can talk about Fernando another day, but I, I ain't make, I ain't crowning him greatest either because some of his decisions were head scratching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but and Fernando about, has done a lot to leave the, his, the team he leaves in, in, in the back. I mean, so there sure. are... It's not all. But that's you know, that's aside more. from his driving ability, sure. right? But but what I'm what I'm trying to argue here is that you can look at their careers as a whole and and see that that that, that actually they took fairly similar trajectories. They went. They had their success early in a Red Bull, one more successful than the other. But the situation is Daniel Ricciardo not... more be- is better than Kimi Raikkonen. Is that what you're going to argue next? 
No. Uh, Why not? No, no. I think Kimi in his prime was probably the best, was probably the fastest driver on the grid. Yeah. I, I think so I can... That's, that's your reason, even though the championships are not there. Just pure form. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think Kimi, Kimi doing what he was doing, um, like 01 to 06, was just a, a, like, like he was a different level. Okay. Um, and I think he was probably even faster than Fernando over at that point. I think Fernando was the better overall driver, but I think I think Kimi was faster. I mean, I just I did to bring it back to the the Ricardo thing. I I just can't I can't view him in the same frame because, I mean, literally you can't see past lines. those championships. Well, no, it's not that. I mean, I I I I feel like, and I'm not a Sebastian Vettel fan, but he had a pretty. He didn't have a good exit, but I mean, I think that this he sort of had a typical exit, exit in that regard. Yeah, but the exit Ricardo was outside of. But Chess, okay, for a good but, part but, of these last two years, we're talking about whether Ricardo deserves a seat or not. Yeah, but Danny Rick he didn't was, have that. Da Danny Rick didn't have an exit on his terms. But right? it's not even that. He, he, he wouldn't did, have even he did had it a McLaren, seat. On but his I team. feel like he'd already checked out at that I mean, point. That's where his career should have ended. The only reason he had a seat for, for as long as he did in, in this last stint is because they had put Nick DeVries in there. Imagine if they had put a Liam Lawson in there before or someone competent. Oh, yeah, I he wouldn't have even had a chance. Which is why which is why I think my argument would have been stronger if he'd finished his his career at McLaren. <laughs> You're gonna have to. Oh yeah. Yeah, because, See, that, because, is, because that too, he, right? Or just walk, we didn't even talk about the McLaren stuff, right? That's but because if he had finished at McLaren, right, you would have seen that okay, that that was that was Vettel because in he his He had Aston a lot Martin. to do with not finishing at McLaren though. He did but that was his but that was that was Aston that was Vettel as Aston Martin in his no, Aston no, Martin. No, 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 no. It's of not. It the was. Thing. I mean, Ricardo was pushed out, Chez. He was literally pushed out. Again, Ricardo was up against Lando Norris, who is currently man. vying for a world championship, versus. Oh, you have Sebastian said doesn't Vettel. deserve to win. Yeah, by yeah. The way. yeah, 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 yeah. But, <laughs> but, 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 but they are. He is a different class of driver to Lance Stroll. Can we at least agree on that? No, we cannot because no, you think Lance Martin Stroll and are Lando not the Norris same. Are, 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 no, they're not the are same. Comparable. No, they're not the same. Aston Martin was nowhere. No, and and part of Aston's recent success that Ar Fernando himself has admitted to getting reaping the fruits of goes back to Sebastian Vettel. He has gone on record to give a lot of credit to Vettel, and yeah. so there was sure. that was and, a and that's, that and, that's, was and that's and that's great. But what I'm saying is that but Danny Rick got beat out by Lando. Right. And, and, and they literally and, and, couldn't wait to push him out. And Sebastian Vettel only just got the better of Lance Stroll. Lance Stroll is not a but that's world because, championship caliber that's driver. That's because Lance Stroll was in that seat. If, I don't. If, if that's right. not his fault that they put someone. They, they they put nepotism in that seat. It's not his fault. I don't understand. Like your your whole thing is well, but, well. Then then blame Lance Stroll. Like get the hell out. Like I don't understand. How can how can it be viewed the same way? One guy was pushed out of his team, and sure. Sebastian be beating Lance Stroll, no big deal. Fair enough. Correct. It's okay. something you'd expect okay, but, to happen. But it's not the same level. Are you saying that's the same thing as a driver being pushed out of not one, but two teams? Now now he's got pushed out of, uh, yeah. what is it, Alpha Tauri these days? Yeah, v yeah, v -carb, yeah v, -carb. Is, v, -carb, v carb is where you're going to win this argument, right? That That's where, the, the, but that's where you're going to get But it's twice now. Yeah, the McLaren and, thing. Just, the, there's only sentimental and... TRP, like there's this sort of the whole idea of publicity with Daniel Ricciardo these last three years. Like, I'm sorry, you can't say that there's any merit on his driving. Like, I don't even understand how we were playing with the idea of him getting back into a Red Bull seat. Like, that's just total wishful thinking and only good relationship with Christian Horner. Like, that's another form of ne nepotism, by the way, just so you know. Like, that's not that's not driving credentials to say, oh, wow, this guy actually deserves to come back. Like, what are we talking about here? Let's be honest, right? The only reason Sebastian Vettel got a seat at Aston Martin was because he had four world championships on Of course. And so did Fernando. Same thing. No, Fernando has been driving pretty bloody well everywhere he's been. Look, the again. There's no, like, like <laughs> but, but I, I, I don't want to do the what about him because we've brought Fernando into a conversation that he doesn't need to be. Well, he does in. because he's, he's kind of in, in the same way, no? He's like, and we'll see how good no, he is. No, 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 no. F F look, Fernando is a different animal to, to, to Sebastian Vettel or Daniel Ricciardo. That's a different level of, a different caliber of driver. Like, he, like even having a conversation about those, about him, Blasphemy. when you're talking about Vettel and, and, and Ricciardo is, is not, 
That, that's well, not we're, that's, that's the not only reason I'm bringing it up is because you're parking championships away. And if we're doing that, then, then we can bring anyone in the mix, no? You can if you want to, but but there's but 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 that's not a serious argument. Whereas I think that the the, the level that Sebastian Vettel operated at and the level that Daniel Ricciardo operated at are not that different. Is Daniel they, they were not then? adapt wait, they were not adaptable enough to get to, to get into another car and absolutely demolish everybody else in the way that, that they did when they had the machinery at their disposal, right? If, if Checo retires at the end of this year, mm. and he is he better than Daniel or is Daniel better than Checo? Yeah, Daniel's better than Checo, yeah. We're going to have to have that debate another time. but that Daniel is 100% better than Checo Perez. You know, I just love that you're having this discussion on pure fantasy. Like, this is just like, okay, if the car had been better, if circumstances, sure. I mean, if circumstances had been better, then Logan Sargent would be driving for Red Bull today. I, you know, no, I know it's an exaggeration, but but that's that's not how this works. Like, we have to live in the world of facts, and it's not just the wins. It's the... It's not just the championships. It's the wins. It's the pole positions. It's the podiums. It's doing it with multiple teams. It's have one with uh, multiple and... teams. Okay, with other teams is what I mean. But Ricardo has done nothing except for getting that one circumstantial win, which I'm not taking away from him. Yeah, but yeah. That's but that's the I only say, thing he has. That's the. But as I say, he, he got had in... some good flashes with Ferrari too. It's not there, but you know, Singapore, right? I mean, there are a few things here and there, right? I mean, it's not, I'm not sitting up here and saying, wow, Sebastian actually was competing for a fifth championship with Ferrari. No, that's not what I'm saying. But, but he wasn't. Yeah, but exactly. Stage, but not... That was the problem. But, in a but car also, that was probably... I mean, the... yeah. Well, no, that's not true. Because at mm. the beginning of at the whole of 2017 and the first half of 18, that Ferrari was the quickest car on the group. Okay, yes, but first it's half... absolutely but, wasted But it. Ferrari leads the league in being ahead in the yeah. first half of so everything. So, so how can you, not, how can you criticize nothing. Daniel Ricciardo for not getting wins when he was part when he was sat in a Renault? That's his fault. He chose to go there. But it doesn't that's matter. Exactly that's the point. car he's in. But that's my point. He chose to go. The, the decision isn't part of his driving ability, though. And that's what I'm talking about here. Jess, you're you're, you're bringing extra you stuff into, into, into the argument. I'm talking purely about ability in the car, speed in the car. I think that, that, that trying to say that Daniel Ricciardo didn't perform well in the Renault because he didn't win, and Sebastian Vettel did perform well in the Ferrari because he did win, is not a fair argument. Those aren't comparable. But, but how many wins does Ricardo have with Renault? To zero. Sebastian has more than that, no? How many wins has Renault had? Again, but zero. But, but, there's a big but. He chose to go Actually, there. Had, they have had one. Esteban Ocon. I, okay, yes. Yeah. And who didn't yeah. win that race? Sebastian Vettel. Just FYI. Okay. Oh, wow. Brilliant. You got me. You got me. Like this, this, exactly. Gotcha. There you go. F fantastic. Okay. So what, what we've, what we've basically boiled this down to is um, I think that you can at least compare Daniel Ricciardo's career with Sebastian Vettel. And there are circumstances to say that, that if you look at it a certain way, that he is even potentially better but it's a difficult argument to make. But I think comparable, at least, is 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 one that you can make. Amar, you're saying that they you can't even compare them because Sebastian Vettel has four championships, and because of that, no matter oh, how no. he drove in those, oh, okay, okay sure. Me. So for me, he could have just retired. Who cares after the fourth? It doesn't matter. It's it's all it's all. I great. think I think I think I would I would view his career differently if he had retired. Your, your argument works very well if you're saying, well, let's get the four timers together or the ones with more, and then I think we can have a better discussion on. I would yeah definitely rank yeah. him. I, I, I wouldn't even that, put him I in my top five, but yeah. And 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 what I am saying is that I don't think you can use championships one solely as a reason for saying that one driver 90%. is better than another. I don't even think 90%. Anyway, that's that's where I think we're going to have to draw a line on this. <laughs> we have gone on for far too long. Uh, as usual, this has been a messy debate. But what do you guys think? Can you even compare a four-timer to Daniel bloody Ricardo, Mr. Topical of the day? Up to you. Um, please like, please subscribe, please leave us a comment, tell us what you think, we'll read all of them, we will respond to as many as we possibly can. Amar, say what you're going to say. Later. And we will see you guys in the next one. <laughs>